Welcome back to Nerds in the Gym podcast, the worst podcast on the internet. I'm Brandon. And I'm Marco. And this is the only nerd podcast that didn't make an episode after the first two episodes of Ahsoka release. So we're going to be able to talk about the first three episodes now. <laughs> Thanks, Marco. Way to take a break during our busy season. I know. I know. I, uh, I went away last weekend, so I wasn't able to record. Although, you, you, we could have done probably a weekday one if you didn't work so much. <laughs> but that's a big if. Um, did you watch all three episodes? I am. I'm caught up. Okay. I made, a, I made an effort. And, and what, what are your thoughts on the show so far? I think it's great. I think it's great, too. Um, it's clearly got the Filoni magic mm-hmm. all over it. Um, there's a real sense of original Star Wars and, like, Combined with Clone Wars, I don't. Even, I wouldn't even say that. I think they go really hard with that Rebel show. Yeah, that's true. Because there, there, there's a lot of Rebels characters and stuff. But he also stated that this is like season five of Rebels. I think it ended after four seasons, something like that. Yeah, um, I'm just confused with the timeline. What do you mean? So I looked it up. I'm pretty sure Ahsoka happens like sixty years after Rebels. No, only like 20. 20 years after Rebels? Yeah. So, Ahsoka happens seven years after Episode 6. Okay. I think it's seven years after Episode 6, because they stated that in there. Like, it's been seven or nine years since the war. So, it's seven or nine years after the events of Episode 6. So, this is happening after Episode 6. So, the Empire has already, quote-unquote, fallen but there's remnants of the Empire that are trying to grow back. Oh, you're searching it now to see where it is in the timeline? Oh, I'm still listening. I just, um, they're saying 10 to 15 years after Rebels. Yeah, so, because Rebels happens basically right before the events of Episode 4. Mm-hmm. Then Episode 4 happens, and there's like 10 to 15 years during those. This has the whole timeline. It actually explains when... That just said when Empire Strikes Back is and stuff. Yeah, Empire Strikes Back takes place three years after A New Hope, meaning the year is three. Yep, because that's uh, after the Battle of Yavin. Battle of Yavin is the battle that happens at the end of Episode 4, when the Death Star blows up. Okay. So Ahsoka then takes place nine to eleven years after the Battle of Yavin. Mm -hmm. Sometime after the events of Mando Season 2... In close proximity to the Mandalorian season three. Yep. Which explains why Ahsoka was not in season three of Mando. Also budget cuts, Disney. <laughs> Ahsoka takes place about a decade after A New Hope, 10 to 15 years after Star Wars Rebels, and over 30 years since the events of the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. Where'd you get 60 years from? I must have misread something, which is yeah. out of the realm of possibility for yeah. me. Um, so, let me read that one more time. Horrible content. Decade after A New Hope. Okay, so it's been 15 years since the Rebels have been together. Yes. Okay. So that means Ahsoka's probably... She's in her 40, 40s. She's 40s? like 42, I think. Now, okay. her species ages slower than humans, though. Well, that was my thing, so it's been 15 <clears throat> years, so, okay. I thought it was 60, and that's why I was confused why all the characters were still relatively young. Now, I'll tell you something that may make you a little excited. The rest of the shots in the trailers mm-hmm. have been confirmed to happen in Episode 4. I think except one of them is not confirmed, okay. which is the visual of Thrawn. They haven't confirmed nor denied, but the rest of the trailers happen through episode four so we know nothing for episodes five through eight in terms of footage on the other hand dave filoni is known for releasing trailers for the second half of seasons okay so maybe we'll get another like second half of the season trailer or something i don't know time will tell but um if if there is not Episode 4 will have taken care of basically all the footage we have seen in the trailers. Okay. Which will be interesting. I mean, I like it so far. I feel bad because you know the older Sith 
did man yeah, passed away he, after filming ray stevenson which is sad because i am really liking his character we haven't gotten a lot of him i like his character a lot and he's done nothing for us to like him marco i know what has he done he stood there and looked burly i know that's See, it you want to know what it is is he, the way that his character is being used is like a human version of darth vader so like you see his face and stuff but like he's he's basically just the way darth vader was we we get these very um like just straightforward lines of dialogue mm-hmm. and he hasn't done too much so like there's this mystery behind him but he's just kind of badass at, yeah at the same time um i like the witches of darth Amir. i like that they brought them on because mm-hmm. this might be besides darth maul this might be their first live action appearance right yes the yep. game really leaked into him a lot but yeah um and there's something there were people saying because i didn't play the second uh jedi survivor game i haven't gotten into it yet either. but apparently um people are saying you can tell that dave filoni has clearly played the two games <laughs> um <clears throat> so but yeah that that opening sequence of the show when balin and the girl board the plane or board the ship yes and they just take them out um one a lot of that was actually in line with obi-wan and qui-gon's boarding in episode one when we first see them okay that's Uh, them just trying to say they were jedis at one point yeah yeah um but and then ahsoka doing her like indiana jones skit in the beginning um this is a less happy ahsoka huh definitely uh not really happy go lucky anymore yeah no she's definitely a little i i do have to say i'm not the acting in this show does seem a little bit more bland i would say the the lines seem a little wooden from the characters it's just i think it's a tone issue yeah because rebels was such a like a happy kid show yeah and now everyone's sad yeah um, which I guess that is the thing because they're all thinking about how Ezra's gone. Right. With that, um, also no offense, but if you've been gone 15 years, I might throw in the towel <laughs> and I expect you to do the same. Yeah. Put, yeah. Put in a solid effort. Yep. And then call it. Yep. Yep. That's true. The only brand I'm, content we would get is reruns of this podcast. <laughs> I might... I might have to go back and watch those final five episodes of Rebels I quit on after the Darth Maul episode. Oh, you didn't watch the final five? I didn't watch the final five. I was so mad. Okay. Did Um, anybody die? Do you know? Nah, I don't think so. So this is Freddie Prince Jr., Mm -hmm. who I didn't realize voiced the cast. Voiced, um... He voiced Freddie in Scooby-Doo. Yes. No, not voice. He played him. Right. Well, in a way, when you play someone, you have to voice them. Yeah. He played the Jedi that was training Ezra in Rebels. Ah, uh, what's his name? The blind guy. Yes. Yeah, I forget his name. I think he's had other appearances in Star Wars, too. Very possible. I can't describe how much I dislike this Rebel show, so I'm struggling to call back. Um, But he looks like the character. Yeah, no, he does. So is there a potential that character shows up? Oh, that character does die. I know that the blind guy yes okay so then never mind he's not gonna show maybe up. maybe as a force ghost or something well i thought skywalker was supposed to show up in this hayden christensen at but, some point he's still coming but if it's 15 years after rebels mm-hmm. so is he just gonna be a force ghost yeah oh or they may do flashback scenes like they did with obi-wan if they can get him in that blonde wig again with a ponytail do it um now, so blind guy's dead. So blind guy's dead. All the inquisitors are dead now too, this... except for the one that's in the show. Okay. Which people are trying to figure out his identity. They got to do something with that voice, man. They got to. I almost had to put on close capturing because I had no idea what he was saying. <laughs> Same. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Luckily, he only had like four lines, like Darth Maul. Yeah. He. But even like. On your left was like, meh, 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 meh. On your left. <laughs> I'm mad. So he, he, he sounded like Scooby-Doo with a deep voice. Is that Ezra? 
Did Ezra turn evil? So that's what people are speculating. It's possibly Ezra. People are saying, could it be a clone of Ezra? People are also saying, um, I, I forget the other one. Oh, they're saying, did you ever play the Force Unleashed games? Yeah. They're saying that this is Starkiller. That they're finally bringing Starkiller in. Now, with that being said, Sam Witwer, the guy that's the voice of Darth Maul, mm -hmm. he was the voice of Starkiller in the Force Unleashed games. He is credited as a voice in this show. Okay. But it's not confirmed which voice he is. However, I think there is a trend of him being credited in every Star Wars project, even if he isn't used. Oh, okay. Just So, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure... Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought Force Unleashed 2, he dies at the end. I thought Vader wipes him out. But that's not canon. The Force Unleashed games are One not... is, but not two. No, both of them aren't canon anymore. Oh. So, but the thing is, is the guy that, the way that his stature is, he mm -hmm. does look like Sam Witwer. He's also built like a 15-year-old boy. So that's oh, my Ezra. issue. <clears throat> He's really small, so either yeah. he is a small... Very small male, which they make. Yeah, which they make. Well, I didn't want to give it to any certain nationality. Yeah. But I feel like you and me both know which nationality could be under there. A dwarf? No, because he's <laughs> taller. Yeah. He's built like he's 13 years old. No, yeah, that's like, true. He's built like Christian Bale in... Um, oh, so Sam Witwer six one, so... So, he might be doing the voice, but I don't think he's doing the body. Yeah. But they also didn't address him. Although, he is 179 in weight, which is not... Not super big. Yeah. Although, this says 5'11", so I don't know. Huh. I guess we'll find out. We'll find out eventually. Or yeah. maybe it's one of those things where they just don't give us his identity and just kill him. I think they're going to take out the mask and it's just going to be, like, another strong female character. Much it be uh, they take off the mask and somehow Sam L. Jackson's under there. It's Mace Windu. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Sam L. Jackson, not as Mace Windu, though. Just a different character. <laughs> Shoot. Um, Alright, so I'm looking at this cast. I didn't know that was Chopper till episode 3. Wait, you didn't? Nope, I had no idea. I was like, oh, we know that guy. <laughs> um... Yeah, no, I think Chopper's great, but you want to know who I like better? The, the... sarcastic robot? Yeah. Uh, he is honestly probably the best part of the show. <laughs> he is. He's Ooh. actually one of the Doctor Who. I never watched Doctor Who, but one of the Doctors voices him. We oh, really? Up, yeah, we looked it up after the last episode. But when he tells sabine that she is the worst candidate yes to be a jedi <laughs> that he hasn't seen that like lack of talent and over his thousand years of training or mm -hmm. whatever <laughs> it's just she's like thanks he's like i was just being honest <laughs> hey she took it like a champ but also she's like officially the oldest trainee mm -hmm. pad one yeah they thought anakin was bad at age eight <laughs> and ezra at like 14 if anybody knows anything, she's the one that's going to turn to the dark side. She's like 35. Hey, let's talk about her, though, surviving a stab, yet Qui-Gon still sitting there like... Just called it. So, like, there was something I watched this, like, doctor's perspective on it, and he's <laughs> like, well, if we're looking at where she was stabbed compared to where Qui-Gon was stabbed, Qui-Gon got a bunch of organs severed, hers were missed. And it's like, okay, now, Star Wars Universe, mm -hmm. there is a canon for it, and it's because Bacta tanks were not um, created yet when Qui-Gon was stabbed. Okay. They were made, like, a few months after. Just bad timing. <laughs> bad They're like, hey, guys, check this out. We got cold tubs <laughs> for you guys and Bacta tanks. Which, honestly, Boba Fett would be dead 15 times over if it wasn't for those tanks. Yeah, yeah. That was the entire season one. Yeah, I know. It was him just in a tank. So, what about this Beast Man? And again, I was the one that watched yeah. the show, Marco. We saw him in the background shot of one of the other shows. Mandalorian. Yeah. So, he's still around. So, he is still around. I I heard that he, like he's probably not showing up. You know why? Budget cuts. I was just going to say, expensive. Yeah. 
Well, you have to think to image that entire thing and put it inside a TV show. Mm -hmm. Cause the show I think has, hasn't had like amazing views. It's had like 14 million. Oh, Ahsoka. Yeah. Disney plus. But I, I don't. Disney plus put out a statement saying the things that are getting leaked are false, that they're higher, but yeah. Disney Plus has been on a. Uh... I thought that no, they just released the actual ones though, and it was fourteen million because somebody came out and said it was like nine million, were the leaks, and then Disney was like, no, it was fourteen million. Okay, but um, I think it's just burnout, man. Burnout. Um, I think a lot of people really lost faith in uh, Star Wars. I think. Well, I mean, it happened before with that Han Solo movie that was awesome that no one liked. No, 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 no. It happened with... Last Jedi was the one that caused it, even though I think it's a great movie. Um, so then people boycotted the Han Solo movie, and then that turned into them making... Because people hated The Last Jedi, they're like, oh, we can't lean into what happened in The Last Jedi. Let's completely... Let's bring J.J. Abrams back and try rewriting everything that happened. And then we got the crap show that Episode Nine was. Mm-hmm. And I just don't think it's recovered. I also, I don't think Mandalorian Season 3 helped at all. I think it was an okay mm. season, but it wasn't, at, it did not live up to Seasons 1 and 2. I think the problem is there's no separation between Star Wars and Marvel right now. Yeah. Because they are now written the same. Mm. They look the same. The tone's the same. Yeah. So when you do Secret Wars, that didn't go over well. Still haven't seen it yet. Secret Wars? Yeah. Not Secret Wars. Secret Invasion. Sorry. See, okay. That was, that was terrible, I heard. I heard the same thing. Like, I'd like to get to it, but... I, I've i I've heard it's absolutely awful, and there's a couple things they did in it that are terrible uh, mm-hmm. that I won't spoil. Because um, <laughs> I saw that. I saw what happened. Didn't watch it, though. Which um, is fine. Yeah. This guy. Zeb. Yeah, Zeb. So, what I heard is, is people are saying that maybe Mandalorian Season 3 showed him there to kind of explain why he's not in Ahsoka. Could be. But, um, yeah. He was a he was a really good character, so hopefully they can figure something out. Even put a guy in a suit, Marco. I don't yeah. even need the CJ. Put a guy in a suit. Yeah. Do what they did with Jar Jar. Um, what did they do with Jar Jar? So, the guy wore Jar Jar's outfit and then had this helmet that had Jar Jar's head above him. That's how they did the Jar Jar Banks. Have you never seen that before? I don't think so. I never really looked into it. Oh my god, it's hilarious. Um, Jar Jar Banks, behind the scenes. Episode 1. Like, I only liked the last 20 minutes, so... (laughs) And they pretty much wrote Jar Jar out of 2 and 3. That's what they... This poor guy. (laughs) There's no amount of cameos and game shows they can have him host to make up for this. <laughs> Did you, um, do was, you, do you know what's happening at Disney right now? I'm listening. Um, so the VFX, like, teams and stuff are unioni- unionizing. Okay. So, and they're going to go on strike because of the brutal, like, expectations they've had for the visual effects. Mm-hmm. In terms of deadlines and everything, mm-hmm. which I think that's going to be a game changer for these TV shows too. It's going to slow them down. It, it's going to a slow them down, but if they start paying them more too, we're not going to have the same visual effects in these TV shows anymore. No. Um, you know what's funny is Ninja Turtles just hit a hundred million for the summer. Hundred million dollars. Something like that. Oh really? You were a, something something like that. It's nothing crazy, but it's th- a it's a good release. I thought they would have made more, but I guess cartoons pro- like a cartoon like that wasn't incredibly expensive to make. It might have been. I I get the stats mixed up because it might be a hundred US. But anyways, yeah. so Seth Rogen came out and said he specifically did not want the animators to be overwhelmed. Oh really? So they took essentially an extra year to make the movie. I'm fine with that. G- give them. I would rather animators get be given as much time as they need as possible mm-hmm. to kind of like perfect something and then there's this one guy who's in scotland mm-hmm. who was an animator and said seth rogan called to check in on him make sure everything was okay oh really didn't want him to work more than x amount of hours a week 
That's awesome. And he goes, it was really nice. I enjoyed it a lot. And it was a good experience. No, oh, that, that's that's great on him. The it was the Mutant Mayhem one? Is that what it was? Yeah, it? it's really good, bud. If you get a second, I don't know. It's going to be on streaming soon. So, $70 million budget, $140 million basically, um, for their entire box office run. So, I think they've profited. Oh, right for now. sure. Well, I think there's something weird with movies. They need to, like, double the budget in order for it to become a profit. Because um, you have to put in how much it is to promote it. Yeah. I'd be interested to see how much John Cena pulled in for his three lines. Oh, was he in it? He was in it, but he only had three lines. Who did he play? He played Bebop. Oh, okay. I don't know who that is, but okay. You know who Bebop is. The Rhino? No. Don't? No. Don't lie to me, Marco. I'm not lying, I don't think. You love the Ninja Turtles. I used to watch those live action ones back in the day with those like insane like costumes that the people had to wear. Oh yeah. I used to love those movies. They hold up. <laughs> good to watch. Um Man, what else was I going to say? I forget what else I was gonna say. For the entire episode? Yeah, no, there there was a specific like second half of this that like I had idea to talk you had about. lined up yeah i had lined up and now i completely forget but uh yeah your legos had the steepest fall in profits in almost two decades that came out a couple days ago really yeah i wonder why well the economy is getting pretty bad also maybe we just people don't have a week's paycheck to spend on legos that's true besides you hey <clears throat> i almost finished my indiana jones one what's taken so long uh like, so it comes with, you know, like how when you have Legos, there will be bag one, two, three, four, and whatnot? Yeah. So this one, there are 10 bags worth of stuff. It's like a 300-page instruction book. And then... For the record, these this new age of the Legos, they hold your hand piece by piece. Well, so this is, this is an 18-plus set, mm -hmm. too. It's the Temple Escape, uh, or the Golden Idol one. Mm-hmm. And there's like 1,500 pieces, but a lot of the pieces are very small pieces. And do you, my least favorite part about this set, and this is why it's taking me so long, is I don't want to do the sticker parts. I hate oh, peeling no. the stickers and putting them on the pieces. It's too much stress. Because it's so hard to line them up. And you're going to screw it. If you screw it up. It's like that forever, forever or, or and, the sticker's done. Know. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, I literally will get to a sticker piece and then I'm just like, I'm not doing this right now. And then I'll walk away, forget about it for a few days. And then I'm like, I should do that sticker piece. And then I put the sticker on and I'm like, I take like 10 minutes to put the sticker on. Mm -hmm. Um, which I don't get why Lego just doesn't print these things onto the pieces. Just print them on the pieces. It can't cost that much more money or be that hard or just put the sticker on for us. I'm just checking my notes section. I don't think I have anything in there. It's insane. It's crazy. But, um, yeah, no. I, 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 I just get annoyed with the whole Lego thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. You haven't been back to the shop? What? You haven't been back to the shop? Uh, um, South Street or North Street? No, I haven't been back. They are supposed to be getting Indiana Jones stuff, um, soon. Maybe I'll go down for that. You should wear your costume. I need to get the uh, shirt and the pants for it next, and the boots. And Halloween's the coming up, perfect excuse. I know, I know it is. Oh, that's what I was going to talk about, though. Have you heard about the Starfield game that came out? Starfield, huh? No. Yeah, so, I, it's, the tech, technically the release is not until next week, like September 8th. So Starfield is made by Bethesda, who makes the Elder Scrolls games, the Fallout games. Mm -hmm. This is one of those RPGs, except it's spanned across a thousand planets. A hundred of them are civilized. Mm -hmm. You create your own spaceship. You fly planet to planet. Um, it's it's a pretty massive game, but it looks really good. The problem is, is it is only on PC and the new Xboxes. And I don't have a PC that can run it, and I don't have one of the new Xboxes. Just try and run on a Win 7 device. Um, just looking at these pictures, it looks insane. Yeah, and I think there you, there's like a whole um, skill branch called Telekinesis, so you can pretty much use the Force in it. 
Oh yeah, it looks like a Star Wars ripoff. But it's not Star Wars, like, at all. Mm-hmm. But I've been, I've been watching people play the game. A lot of people are giving it, like, seven, eight, and nines. Um, it just looks like one of those massive games that just has, like, a lot of, like, stuff that you can do. Mm-hmm. And I can only imagine they'll update it over time, too. That's, like, the new age of gaming is get it a game and then you add stuff to it as time goes on. But I, it, it looks incredible. You know, maybe if uh, more people support this podcast, I could, uh, you know, purchase it at some point, have the money to purchase it, afford it. Afford it, that's the word. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to do? Yeah. You were just monologuing along? <laughs> I mean, they... Shout out to Trent, who told me about it. Mm-hmm. Um, that new Mario game, they did like a 15-minute preview the other day. Did you catch that? No, the there's a new Mario game? game? What, what, what's it called? Uh, Mario Wonder. They did like a, um, oh, I actually did. So I saw the original trailer for this, but I didn't know that they did a whole new thing for it. It was like a 15 minute, not a playthrough, but like, uh, Hey, this is what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty There's cool. A specific word. Nintendo uses it for like an, almost like an open house. Yeah. Yeah. This, so. this looks like such a vibrant game from what they've shown. Like the color palette on it is insane. Well, not to use artistic words. I'm not a painter or anything, but... It's crazy because, like, you eat a certain flower and all of a sudden, like, the game starts tripping out. <laughs> this way they put mushrooms into the game. Like, legit <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> all of a sudden, the pipes are moving and you're flying over, but there's, like, a drill helmet, so you're going underneath things. You know, they're really leaning into this being, like, a high Mario with, like, that logo. Like, that whole wonder thing, it's, like... Wow, they pretty much just made a game about Mario on acid or something. They're going hard. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch this, so that's, that sounds like pretty cool. And I have it on good authority that uh, they replaced Mario's voice. They did replace Mario's voice. I did hear about that, which he's been the voice for how long? Like 40 years? At least, yeah. Yeah, but he signed off to let other people voice him and stuff. But how many more lines do they need Mario to say, honestly? Like... They must have done with, like, what they did with um, James Earl Jones. Mm -hmm. Had him sit in a booth and record everything for hours on end. Or Groot. How many times do I have to pay Vin Diesel to play Groot? In all these different... uh, I mean, I think it's good that an actor gets a paycheck. Yeah. But no, you're right. They could easily just use his voice for eternity. Yeah. Because he doesn't talk. Yeah, no. That and they're re-releasing... I think it's called Mario RPG. Mario RPG. It okay. was a Super Nintendo game where they tried oh, to do... Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yep, I know this game. So, it kind of failed at the time, mm-hmm. but then became a cult classic. Okay. So, like, if you have an original copy, it's like a $400 game. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, Mario's <laughs> back, baby. And Mario is back. Switch 2 should be coming out soon. I know, I, they, somehow that is being, like, kept, like, such a complete secret. You you would think that somehow leakers and stuff would get a hold of this, but mm-hmm. there's literally, like, nothing. Um, apparently this leak says it has P- PlayStation 5, like, quality, we'll see. The Nintendo Switch 2 dev kit can run Final Fantasy 7 Remake, apparently. We'll, we'll see what happens with this, but... It will match P- PlayStation 5 visuals and performance, according to a leak. What's crazy is that <clears throat> Switch just never... Nintendo Switch is almost, it's almost genius. Mm-hmm. I'm glad other game systems don't do it, because I'd never be able to play video games. They're just like, it costs $60. And they're like, it goes on sale, take $5 off. Yeah. And then it's back to $60. So games that came out five years ago, mm-hmm. $60. Mm-hmm. They're like, <clears throat> you want it? Come get it. Yeah. Um... Now, this weir- the, the weird thing about uh, the Nintendo Switch, if it does have these PlayStation 5 visuals and performance, mm-hmm. that must mean they're also leaning into they want these other games on their device Platform. that can't, that in the past haven't been able to. Um, I know Microsoft had just purchased um, Activision, uh, which is the company that owns Call of Duty. Um, it hasn't gone through entirely yet. There's still a couple legal things, but one of the biggest things they said is, is Microsoft is like, we want to be able to put Call of Duty on basically every platform. Mm -hmm. One of them is, is they're like, we're going to have a team dedicated putting onto the Nintendo devices. 
If this comes out, though, and it really is matching a PlayStation 5 for visuals and performance, mm -hmm. they're not going to really need a whole dedicated team to that. It should be easier to port it over to the Switch 2 if it's up uh, in line with, like, a PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X. Do you think... So, as far as sales go, mm -hmm. what systems are the top? PlayStation 5 leads the way... Um, well, I think PC technically leads the way, but okay. it goes, it, right now it's let's, actually... Let's take PC out of it. Let's go console. Yeah. So it's really, Switch has the highest sales, then PS5, then Xbox Series X. Sorry, which one's first? The Nintendo Switch. Okay. So Switch is already winning. Yeah. Sorry, I thought Switch was third. I didn't realize Switch was... Oh, no, no, no. Console, uh, sales comparison... Well, so it's hard to say, too, for the Switch, because I'm not sure if you compare it to, um, it, I'm not sure if you would compare the Switch with the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, because mm -hmm. it kind of came out halfway through, when did the Switch come out, 2018? I have no idea. It was definitely before... Came out in 2017, so that's four years after the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. Then you have the Switch, so the Switch came in like halfway through the generation. So do you, I guess you would match it more against PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And knock on wood, but I haven't had any issues like having to replace parts or anything with it. Yeah, well... So it's durable. I've, I've never had to like replace parts on um a console before the most well, remember your when right when you were getting ready to upgrade to the new playstation mm -hmm. you had a bunch of problems with yours oh mine was, it was like held together with glue at one point no so mine was metaphorically speaking so there's this rubber piece that is underneath the eject button yep so for some reason that thing as it gets older mm -hmm. something happens with the rubber where it starts triggering the eject button all the time. Mm -hmm. So I had to remove it. Um, now, even after I removed it, there were more problems where the eject thing would just happen. So I would just, I got all my games digitally as is. Yeah. But I would just start hearing the disc drive go, <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Um, you traded that in, right? No, I still have my PS4. Still have it? Um, but I am getting ready. I, I still have I have an Xbox One, Xbox 360, PS4. I want to just kind of get rid of all of them and have just my PlayStation 5. Mm -hmm. Depending on how much money. I, I know I won't get enough for a new Xbox, but I'm thinking of getting a little bit of money towards an Xbox because I really want to play this Starfield game. Mm -hmm. But also in 2026... An Indiana Jones game is releasing by Bethesda that is only for Xbox and PC. Right. So um, Xbox doesn't seem to have the sellout like PlayStation had. The yeah. Xbox seems like it's still gettable. That State Line video games, I didn't have any problems with them. Down in the, the Springfield Mall. Oh, okay. So, I did pull up uh, game consoles, like selling-wise. Mm -hmm. Nintendo Switch beat out the PlayStation 4. Uh, Nintendo Switch has nearly 130 million sales. This looks like the chart Trent showed me at work the other day. Because this just happened. Yeah. The uh, Switch just beat the Game Boy yep. and Game Boy Color. Which uh, is weird that they put them together, but that's okay. Yeah. Because they released at the same time, I thought. Maybe not. But I, th I think it's essentially the same exact hardware. Just one of them just can do color. It's very um, similar. Yeah. So the PlayStation 4 has 117 million. PlayStation 5 has 41.7. Now, the thing about that 41.7 is, is yes, Xbox Series X and S are more competitive with PlayStation 5, I would mm -hmm. say. Uh, one, they have better hardware, but also exclusives, I would say, are more competitive. Hmm. But also, they've the chip shortage has really thrown um, these in for a loop, these new consoles. Um, Xbox One sold 49... Wait... I think. You know what's funny is so, how many of those chips you think just got thrown out for no reason? Yeah. Nintendo DS was 2004, huh? Yeah. Yep. I and don't... I don't think I even had that one. I did. But, I know um, I had the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. Yeah. 
And then these are all just like... And then the Switch took over all of them, huh? There's no Game Boy, right? Anymore? No, there's no Game Boy anymore. It's just the Switch. The Switch took out Wii as well. Like, it, the Switch does everything that the Wii... Oh, don't get me wrong, it's great. Yeah. I just need something a little smaller for a handheld game. Yeah, yeah. I need that. I've tried yeah. to play the Switch, like, I just... To, like, take it to the other room instead <laughs> of putting it on the TV. That's just too wide. Yeah. Not for me. No, it is weird. But, um... Yeah, no, so Switch is, like, the king of the consoles, technically. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have to say, though, because... There's only one console you can play Nintendo games on. And it's the Nintendo consoles. Xbox 360. Yeah. So it's just, so it's like there's a reason why they have so many sales because people are flooding to play these games that mm -hmm. like I don't like people that don't even play video games like Nintendo games. Right. And they'll go out of their way to go get a Nintendo product. And I think it's more kid friendly. So I think oh, parents yeah. are more likely to buy their kid a Nintendo than they are an Xbox or a PlayStation. Yeah. Like, but also like what Nintendo's doing really well is that probably every four to six months they're releasing a sixty-four game, yeah. or their PlayStation Need for Speed. They're getting PlayStation games mm -hmm. on the Switch. Yeah. So it's just like I'm more than willing to pay thirty bucks for a game I had thirty years ago. But this is also where things get interesting. If the next Nintendo Switch is really up to par with a PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, mm -hmm. they may completely blow those consoles out of the water. Like, Microsoft and Sony may have to finally be like, hey guys, we should actually partner up against Nintendo. As opposed to fighting against each other because they're having their own ridiculous war with each right. other. Right. And Nintendo just sits there laughing. Because yeah. <laughs> there's also no, like, Xbox or PlayStation world. Nintendo's no. got... No, no, like merchandise yeah games yeah universal Studios. they're just racking it up like the most that xbox has i would say is like they tried doing halo stuff but that's kind of failed recent years it's so funny i had paramount plus two and i just had zero desire to watch it i heard that show was terrible that's what i heard um and then like but also i just replayed on the xbox i just replayed all the halo games oh they're great yeah Do you have the master chief collection is yeah, that what you... that's what it yeah, was yeah it's great Sat down, burned through it. And that's what they... They're just taking old games, bud. Redoing the graphics. And there's a button where you can watch the old graphics. Yeah, yeah. So I'm watching it. I'm just like, this is what I thought good graphics were. Yeah, on. yeah. And then you hit the button and it's just like, this is crazy. But like... So minimum amount of effort, minimum amount of work, and they're just reprinting. Mm -hmm. Smart. Yeah, no, it is smart. But um, yeah, no, these... Like, I just... I don't know. Something needs to happen, like... The console war between Xbox and PlayStation, I wish they could just come together. Mm -hmm. And then, like, they could focus on those premium release games that you get, like, Call of Duty and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and stuff like their exclusive and, and stuff could come together being uh, the, like, Sony has the Spider-Man games. Mm -hmm. Okay, like, then those can all just be on the one console... But then, like, now Microsoft has this I thing. I might like, just buy the shittiest PlayStation I can find just to play the Spider-Man games that have eluded me for the last decade. Oh, do, do you want to borrow uh, my PlayStation and play my PlayStation 4 before I get rid of it? I'm tempted. And play the Spider-Man game that came out a couple of years ago? I'm tempted, Marco. I'll think about it. Yeah, Don't no. let me hold you up, though. Because, okay. you know me, I have no... I have no, no, because no, I need to figure out, like, what I'm going to do with all the... Like, how I'm going to sell it and everything. Yeah, I mean, you're obviously going to make more money if you sell it on your own. But as far as convenience goes, just putting it all in a box and taking it down there. Yeah. Might be the way to go. Yeah. All right, bud. We're about 40 minutes in. Yeah. You want to I wanna do your little plug here? Yeah, so uh, we got some donuts from a local donut place called Shire Donuts. Not to give away our location. But um, did they tape this down? No, they didn't. Uh oh I wanted to uh, try one of these donuts. So Brandon had sent me a message during work the other day about this peanut butter and jelly donut that you said is really good. Oh, it's so good. They do it probably once every couple months. We're doing this at the end of the episode so that I'm not like chewing in your guys' faces for an hour or whatever it takes me to eat this. There's also a Boston Cream. That's their weekly one, though. They always have that one. And that's... Boston Cream is a must-have. Oh, it's so show. good. I tried to tell the kids at work. No, no. And look. they called them mid, and I was not happy. I, really? I lost my... They called the Boston Cream mid? I have, it was... They're just dumb. Like, Boston Cream in general, or this no, place? No, they called Boston? that one. 
And then I just, I lost it. I was like, you Boston don't cream is my favorite donut. So am I going to, oh, I also got the Pop Tart one. Ooh. Am I going to have to try the Boston cream one to see if like they're right? Have you not had it before? Not theirs, no. Oh, well, this isn't a fantastic donut. They're I, wrong. I didn't know that they had these pre made donuts for the longest time. Oh, so I, I never did the pre made donuts, and I realized I was spending a lot of time in line because Sundays they're packed. It takes forever for them to make the donuts for people. Well, yeah, because they make them in front of you, which is fine. People love watching their donuts get made. And then I just come in, kind of cut the line. People are looking at what donuts they want. Get the pre made, get out of there. So good. I love peanut butter and jelly. That is. That's why I told you, bud. That's... It is a fantastic donut shop. That is unfair. And plus, I'm not a fan of their cake donuts. This is like a more traditional, like, made donut. Gotcha, yeah. Alright, let's see. Who are these kids that are saying a Boston cream is mid? That's that's what the kids at work said. And I was like, you don't know what you're talking about. And you think Taco Bell's fine dining. And then I stormed out. So good. That's really good. Marco, I used to wake up early on Sundays just to be at the donut shop in time because Boston Cream sells out. I used to get like five of them, and that's what I ate all Sunday. That's 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 what I... I go down Market 32. Mm -hmm. I buy all their Boston Cream, <laughs> and I bring them home because that's pretty much all we eat at my house. I, I felt so bad. There was like this lady just staring at me waiting to get the Boston Cream. And I just kept taking one <laughs> and another one. And then there was even enough to fill up the my box to get all 12. There was 11. And I took the 11th one, put it in, and she just looked at me like, are you kidding me? More than once I've had to negotiate with people in line. Because like, they'll have kids and they'll be like, oh, we don't know what we want. And I was just like, well, they have five Boston cream left. <laughs> and then I was like, how many do you guys want that you're letting me cut? And they go, two? I go, sweet, I'll take three. Do you, do you want to try the Pop-Tart one? Ooh, I do. Go ahead. You want me to get a knife? It's a, it's up to you. Let me get a knife. I'll okay, he's going to get a knife. This this <laughs> PMR and Jelly Donut, though, is... It's a game changer. I, I'm a... So, here's the thing. is I'm a huge fan of PMR and... I'll talk to just the camera. <laughs> so, here's the thing. is I'm a huge fan of PMR and Jellies. I think they're delicious. This thing is... This thing is magical. I don't know why more places don't make this. It is so good. This is reliving my childhood as an adult. Which I guess is reliving your childhood. But. Oh, you got you came back with the knife. This is, this is an interesting donut. So. They asked me when I got it. Do you want blueberry or strawberry? You the, went blueberry? I went blueberry. So here's the thing. Blueberry Pop-Tarts are my favorite. Like, okay, good. I think they're delicious. They did give you an edge piece here. They an did. An edge piece of the Pop-Tart. I don't think we need that. I but think that's more decoration. But this is more... We really need to get Shire Donuts as a sponsor on this podcast. I should have really told them that this is what I was ordering them for. They would have laughed so hard because they're like, you're getting three donuts. <laughs> um, um, it's all different flavors. But, um... So the way this works is, is those crumbles on top are not just blueberry. They're a mixture of blueberry and strawberry. Okay. It's the frosting that is just blueberry. There oh, the go. camera's out there, yeah. I mean, this place is amazing. I'd eat there every day if I could. Mm. That's super subtle, mm -hmm. but super good. This is the inside of the donut. Mm. These are the good ones. These are the best ones. Yeah, these, this is good stuff. This is terrible content for you guys. I don't know how my body is going to react because I've been doing a carnivore diet. Oh my gosh. We probably have 20 minutes before you just your body just rejects it. <laughs> hey, it's worth whatever happens to my body after today, this is worth it. <laughs> my body is going to implode. <laughs> I also want to... Just shout out Marco for coming over with these donuts, but also not getting enough for both of us. And then just immediately eating both, not even cutting them in half. <laughs> Do you want me to cut it in half now? No, no, you're good, bud. I've tried it before. Yeah, I know. I just think it's funny how your mind works. <laughs> it's not us taste testing it. It's you taste testing it. <laughs> Taking one bite out of each donut, and by the time the third, you're like, wait a minute. Brandon's um, here. Well, I don't We're mind. in his house. Here's the thing, is I have, like, no... 
I, I should think about what other people think. <laughs> that's why I said I don't care if you cut it because I literally have no shame biting into something that somebody else bit into. Which maybe I should worry about more often because I don't know where other people's mouths have been. But <laughs> here's a cup. Brandon doesn't brush his teeth. <laughs> Good to know. Oh, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> it's also I don't know if people want to watch this lady and tramp donuts. <laughs> hey, Bert did it on his podcast mm-hmm. once. Did he? You don't remember that? Tom, uh, he mm-hmm. was talking about how well he was doing with his weight loss, and then mm-hmm. Tom tempted him by bringing oh, a do bunch of donuts. <laughs> I do remember. Oh, do you want your knife back? Yeah, let me take the knife back here. I'll take my top. Not that I ever took my top off, but... <laughs> but no, it's honestly the best. But you can't beat that place. Yeah, no, that was, re- that was really good. Uh, they're pre-made donuts. I recommend highly over those other donuts that they have. They're cake ones. I think other, like, the kids really love the other ones. Well, it's like, um... It's like going to, like, a Subway or something, or, like... Where you create your own sandwich or create mm-hmm. your own, or like, uh, Hot Harry's with burritos. I'm yeah. trying, you know, people don't know what Hot Harry's, Hot Harry's or Elada is, so I'm trying to give them, like, an idea. You're over there at Subway thinking you're creating your own sandwich. It's like, I'll have ham and cheese <laughs> with extra mayo. <laughs> cheese. <laughs> Why, why did these podcasts always get so wacky at the end? I don't know. Like, it seemed like a good idea, the taste test, and then I realized you don't ever explain. You're like, oh, it's subtle. What is? The flavor. It was it was a great flavor, but it wasn't like... Overwhelming. Like, like you know, like when you have a Pop-Tart, it's just super sweet. That wasn't like super sweet where I'm like, my taste buds are burning. I also forget your taste buds are off. Yeah, that's true. Which makes this stuff so funny. <laughs> is because when your taste your taste buds are off, so it's just like you're like, huh. you know, when you taste a pop tart and it's overwhelming. <laughs> no, the rest of us don't have that problem, Marco. <laughs> the rest of us just eat pop tarts and enjoy ourselves. And you're just like, you ever eat a strawberry pop tart and immediately get crippling anxiety? It's like, no, <laughs> nope. You're like, you ever have a chocolate pop tart and just wish you were dead? What? No. I wish it was strawberry, but that's okay. (laughs) You're like, oh man, I I don't mind Pop-Tarts, but they're so salty. No, they're not. They're solid, them. Have you not seen their sodium content? I want you to look at the side of a Pop-Tart box. How do you think they stay uh, preserved for so long? Just anytime we eat anything, you're just like, oh, it's really salty. No, you added salt. All right, you want, you want me to give you my 110% critique of these then? Well, Quickly? don't critique it. It'd be, be nice. It's okay. Business. I thought all three flavors were delicious. Um, I already told you about the blueberry one. I think I did that pretty well. Um, peanut butter and jelly remind me of my childhood. I bit into that thing. It that was, peanut butter and jelly is perfect it's, amount it's, of peanut butter and jelly. That's what I was just going to say. It is the perfect balance between peanut butter and jelly, and they use good jelly. They didn't I use, think like, they make their own. Really? Okay, that makes urine better, and they use good quality peanut butter. Well, here's the thing. I don't think that's a can of peanut butter. They make their own peanut I butter, I think too? they make some sort of peanut butter spread, but the peanut butter hits first yeah, when yeah. you bite it. And, and it's, it's so like, good. So good. That Boston cream, the cream was light, which I like. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a super heavy, thick cream, and it still had a really strong flavor. Oh, no, it's very delicious. Yeah, and the, don- and, and the donut itself was really good. The, like I said, there was a stretch there. Where I was going every Sunday and getting like five of them. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you for Shire Donuts for not sponsoring this, but let me buy these from them. <laughs> thank you for letting me in your store <laughs> and not kicking me out like so many others <laughs> and comparing you to Subway. <laughs> All right. Well, that's been the podcast today, I guys. I was going to say, we're just under 50 minutes. That's a pretty good stopping point before yeah, no, things it is. get weird. <laughs> All right. We've been Nerds in the Gym. I'm Brandon. And I'm Marco, and I'll try to see you next week. Well, we'll try to see you next we'll week. We'll see if Marco can go to the donut shop twice in one week without getting <laughs> kicked out. All right.